You know it's good when you're like shoving burning hot broccoli in your mouth. <laughs> Worth it. Hey, this is Sharon, and I'm gonna teach you how to make vegan broccoli quiche. which is something I sort of fairly recently learned how to do. Uh, this is a pre-bought shell, pastry shell. If you are a, an overachiever and you wanna make your own post pastry shell or pie crust, go for it. Um, and then you can post a video and teach me. This is a Whole Foods pie crust uh, that I've just baked for about 10 minutes on 400. There's a Publix brand one that's also vegan. You just look at the ingredients. It's not labeled vegan, it's just accidentally vegan. I pre-made all of my filling. So this is the vegetable mixture that I'm using. It's broccoli and onions along with some garlic and some Greek seasoning. I just sauteed it, chopped it small, very bite-sized pieces, and then sauteed it for several minutes. It doesn't really need to cook a ton in the quiche itself. You already want it to be pretty soft. This is the filling. I actually uh, pre-make this as well and then when I'm ready with my pie crust I put it all together and bake it. It's very fast and easy. This is the vegan egg that I use. It's made by Just Egg. This is not sponsored. I just really love this fake egg. It's the best fake egg I've ever tried. Um, going vegan was hardest for me because of eggs and this has been such a nice treat. It's made out of mung beans. I think I've had mung beans, I'm not quite sure. They seem to be an Asian bean maybe, I don't know. So what I do in this bowl ahead of time and mix up is a whole bottle of Just Egg and um, some sort of vegan cheese. I like the Follow Your Heart mozzarella or they also make a Parmesan that's very good or BioLife is a good vegan cheese. I do a fourth a cup of some sort of nut milk, in this case, unsweetened soy milk. You don't want it to be vanilla flavored or anything like that, but it can be rice milk or almond milk. I do black salt. So the reason I add black salt instead of regular salt, black salt has a very eggy flavor. Like it smells eggy when you put it in there. My, my cats want it, you know, like it's eggy. So I added black salt into the just egg mixture to make it even eggier. And then I also did pepper. So then I mixed that up and here it is. Okay, so the way you make this quiche, it's very simple. I haven't made a, a real quiche since like college. One of my college roommates is French American and so we used to make quiches with real milk, real eggs, real cheese and all that. Um, but I haven't made a quiche in forever. So all I did when I wanted to make a quiche with just egg and see if it was gonna work, was just look up a recipe for a regular quiche and just use my vegan ingredients. And actually, I've made this now several times. I've made it for guests, which is scary. If you don't know if it's good or not, or I mean, if they're not vegan too, you're kind of making them eat your vegan food, right? Uh, but it turned out great and was actually a real crowd pleaser. You just add in all of your veggies on the bottom and sort of distribute them evenly and then you pour over your mixture. And so there is cheese in here. Um, so you can be kind of deliberate as far as getting the distribution even. I will say I normally just dump it because that's how I cook. I'm really not a purist in any, I keep saying it, but I am not like fancy in my cooking style. So oftentimes I just dump it, but I'm making it neat for the camera. But you also might want to make it neat for, you know, guests or what have you. So that's gonna fit perfectly actually here. And then usually, and you don't have to do this, but I usually will use um, some more cheese, about a half a cup more cheese on the top. Just sort of have a melty golden topping. I will say it depends on if you like vegan cheese. Um, I do and I find that the, the ones I name like BioLife and um, Follow your heart are actually very melty and delicious, but if you don't want it, you don't actually need to have cheese on top. So I just do it to have a nice melty topping. And then to make it pretty, I just put these nice little chopped cherry tomatoes on top. It's nice to have tomatoes in there, but really I do this for the looks. And I make it kind of pretty and evenly distributed. And there it is. I've had the oven preheating. It's uh, up at 400 now. You actually should put it on a cutting board because it can have some drippage. Carefully place it here. This is a silicone uh, cooking sheet, baking sheet. I really uh, decide how long to bake it by 
look, but usually it's about 30 or 40 minutes, really when it's golden brown on top. So we put it in the oven. Okay, so that was it. It probably took at least about 40, 45 minutes to cook fully. I just wait until the top is golden and it looks really firm. Sometimes you have to press on it to see how firm it is. I kind of bumped up the broiler on high to toast the top and almost burned it. So don't do that. Or if you do that, you have to watch it. I feel like somebody on the British Baking Show that it caught on the sides. It's still gonna be good. It's not burned enough to cause problems. So toasty on the top. It's still pretty firm and a little melty in the middle. I'm gonna take a bite of it. Mmm. It's very cheesy and creamy and broccoli-y and really delicious. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'm gonna keep posting plant-based videos. Go away, please. I'm I'm prepping. Where should I put food? It's in there.